It was widely reported this week on the rush of demolitions taking place around the sacred and renowned Jagannath Temple in Puri, Odisha. The temple is said to be at least 800 years old and has been attacked no less than 18 times in its history. It is a world famous pilgrimage location where the magnificent Rat Yatra is witnessed by millions each year as three colossal chariots carry the temple deities. The Supreme Court had earlier quashed at least two petitions against the demolition drive which aims to remove all structures within 75 meters of the temple's boundary walls. The demolition order was given by the recommendation of a Justice B.P. Das Commission of Inquiry but apparently did not take consultation from key Hindu leaders in the region including Puri Shankaracharya of Gobardhan Peet Swami Nishchalan Saraswati, who noted that the decisions of the Hindu religious heads on religious issues are final. The Shankaracharya noted that he also was not consulted before a report was submitted to the Supreme Court relating to reforms in Jagannath Temple. He alleged an attempt to grab Gobardhan Peet property by powerful persons. The main Jagannath temple is surrounded by various smaller temples, mutts, peats, and other establishments. The Shankaracharya expressed concerns over the demolitions of buildings including age-old religious institutions because they directly and indirectly render service to Jagannath temple, several of which were hastily demolished this week. The government of Orissa took major controls over the temple in 1960 when the Sri Jagannath Temple Act was enacted to reorganize the management system of the affairs of the temple and its properties. This was done despite pleas from Gajapati Ramachandra Deva IV claiming his entitlement over the temple and deity insofar as his forefathers had constructed and consecrated the temple and deity. The Supreme Court of India rejected his pleas. In October of 2018, devotees and others clashed with police at the Jagannath Temple over the implementation of a queue entry and exit system, as well as restrictions preventing donations to priests, directing that all donations must go to the temple hundi only. Today, all mutts and mandirs in the state of Odisha function under the Hindu Religious Endowment Act, under the Commissioner of Endowments. Electricity was cut to many of the nearby buildings to force the caretakers out and demolish the buildings. Mahant of Bada Akadamat, Chatamat, and Mangumat were directed to vacate structures slated for destruction. Various arguments in favor of the demolitions have noted safety, crowd management, expansion of a nearby road, and evicting those who may have encroached on temple lands. It is to be noted that plans to demolish and build illegally on the premises of Thrissur Temple in Kerala were previously discovered, a plan which would effectively eliminate the physical space where one of the world's largest festivals takes place each year in the state of Kerala. Temples in Kerala have been overpowered by the state government Devishwam boards, where successive attacks were also made on forcing women into Lord Ayappa of Sabrimala Temple. In April of this year, the Supreme Court questioned government authorities taking over administration of religious places, saying the task should be entrusted to devotees as it expressed concern over the failure of various state governments in managing temple affairs. The court made specific reference to the Nataraja Temple in Chirambaram, Tamil Nadu, where temples are currently administered under the state's Hindu Religious and Charitable Endowments Department. If you feel responsibility is a power, you make your life successful. <laughs>